We are live, and this is Talking Sci-Fi. And your host, Sean and Randy. Welcome to Talking Sci-Fi with Sean, Sci-Fi Sean, and... Who are oh, you? Oh, Randy. You're Randy. This is Randy. Um, we uh, have made it to episode number four. That's this many. I'm holding up four fingers. I have to remember I have to describe myself because a lot of people just listen to this podcast and not watch on YouTube. And he's very good with his hands. So, so for our first guest, what to, said. Yeah, right. For our first guest of episode number four, first ever on our podcast and, and YouTube, is my really good friend. I consider him a brother, um, Thomas Galvin the Third. Welcome. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing well. Our podcast today. You could be doing a lot better if you weren't here at our show, probably, because, you know, mm. well, you know, it's just giving up a Saturday to come and hang oh, out with a couple guys, you know. See, so. this is sleeping, lounging in my bat cave. Right? Oh, my God. So it's, <laughs> we'll get into your bat cave a little bit. But we have invited Thomas because he is a expert oh, no, no, prop no. and cosplayer. I think you are. I, I agree. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> And he's brought some props, so make sure you check out our YouTube uh, uh, video blog to see what we're showing you. But we'll try to describe them as best as we can for you guys uh, out in uh, uh, podcast land where you can't see anything. So open your eyes and pay attention. So, Thomas, how long have you been into the prop and cosplay world? Uh, well, I really got into it when I moved to Orlando, uh, which was back in 96. Okay. And, but it, honestly, it goes all the way back to my childhood because there was only so many Star Wars toys you can get. And one of the major ones is they never sold lightsabers. They did not. They did not make no. lightsabers when you were a kid. That was one thing I wanted. And so technically my first prop was a Christmas tube wrapped oh, in goodness, blue man. construction paper and aluminum foil. Yep. And I made my very own lightsaber so I could run around and Defend the uh, defend the galaxy. Jedi Knights. That's right. So, <laughs> well, you know, you got to come up with things, and what we're going to try to focus on is uh, cosplaying on kind of a budget things you can find around your house or at inexpensive places you can buy. Because I've seen, and you have two of experienced, uh, and Randy, you have two of yeah. these people that do costumes that are so elaborate. You know, and they really go into a lot of detail, but a lot of people, unfortunately, do not have the finances to do that, so they have to cosplay on a budget. So, getting a Christmas wrapping tube and making a lightsaber out of it, yeah, that's awesome. Doesn't stand up in the rain, so if you go no. and defend the uh, Jedi's on a wet planet, that would kind of like bend them a little bit. <laughs> not, not on Dagobah. Not on Dagobah. <laughs> not, definitely not on yeah, Dagobah. Yeah, De Dagobah would be out for the Christmas tube lightsaber, but... I I would like to say something real quick. Absolutely. If you don't mind. Oh, by the so, way, that's, that is a happening. Randy has a, is sporting a mohawk kind of haircut oh, um, this morning. Yeah. So, you know. I, I need to get the side face. That'd be great for yeah. like an eight year old. It looks really good on you. Thank so, you. Awesome. <laughs> All right. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I had. I cut that out. Uh, what was I going to say? See, I don't even remember what I was going to say. I got you off kilter. You did. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Okay, so Sci Fi Barto. When I went to Sci Fi Barto for the first time, I did not realize that. Most of the people wearing them costumes had actually built them. I thought they had bought them. Wow. So I had never been or seen anything like that. And talking to some of these people, I was like, wow, that's that. That's that. And, I, you know, it just blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And so when we did Sci-Fi Barto for the parade, I wanted to be Hellboy. So I was able to take a coffee can, a red Folgers coffee can, mm -hmm. cut a hole in the back of it, slide it on my arm, and put a red glove on with a yellow rain jacket to make my... Hellboy. And you had a mask yeah. as well. Yeah, right, yes. Well, well, I did buy that. But the rest of it, I actually mm -hmm. made myself through... I was I was very impressed by that when I seen that. I would never have thought about that. So, you, you could do... I do last-minute kind of things when I used to be in the uh, Star Trek convention circuit for years with uh, Vulcan. Um, hey, everybody from Vulcan, if you're watching. Um, I would get a... I was in charge of all the entertainment. So, we did like a Hollywood Squares game and a match game and I said I always went and got people kind of in costume to be on these things so um, they wanted me to do match game and I said as being a guest on there one of the celebrity guests I'm like what can I come up with and as a lot of you know wait for it big reveal I'm bald 
<laughs> so I thought, you mean what? you don't have silver hair? I don't have silver hair. This is fake. This is cosplay. Like, How many see? hats do you have like that? I have a lot of hats. I was going to say. And people really, think, people really think this is my hair. Because all the different hats. And they're very disappointed when I take it off. So, you know. <laughs> but anyway. So I'm like, what can I cosplay? I'm literally an hour out from doing this. And um, I said, I was really into professional wrestling back then. I know a lot of people are. I've kind of gotten away from it because my favorite wrestlers are gone. And I like The Rock, Stone Cold, uh, and uh, Cactus Jack, and the, the older guys. So I said, I'm going to do um, Stone Cold Steve Austin. So I went, and I happened to have a plain black t-shirt. I went around, and I found someone that had uh, masking tape. And I went and I cut out 316, I put it across my, oh my just taped it on yeah. there, <laughs> and a friend of mine was there, and he had hurt his leg, and um, he gave me his right boot, his walking boot, so it looked like I had a brace on, because you know, Stone Cold always had that yeah. brace on his leg, and I found me a hat, a black hat, and I did the 316, and, I, and someone had a couple beers, and I got a couple beers, and bam, I was Stone Cold Steve Austin in less than 30 minutes. Right, that's awesome. And, the funniest thing that brought this to air, because I'm thinking, this is never going to work. The tape's going to peel off. It's going to be, everybody's going to, but that's the way that I have always been kind of slapstick, kind of comical. There was a gentleman that looked like, uh, gosh, darn it, I can't think of the wrestler's name now. It's leaving me. Um, sunglasses. He passed away not too long ago. Macho, Macho, Man, Savage. Macho Man Randy <laughs> Savage. That's him. <laughs> See? This is what talking uh, sci-fi is about. We might not remember the names, but we got really awesome people that like Thomas and Randy. Well, mm -hmm. Thomas um, <laughs> that uh, can help remember stuff. I'm like trying to that. buffer this. I mean, no, don't okay. buffer. No, this is the, this is it. It's Laurel and Hardy meet the podcast. So, oh man, um, more like Evan Costello. I think you, know. you should see it when the camera's not rolling. So this guy comes up out of the audience. Yeah, when, when, yeah, I'm really truthful then. So no fat jokes today. Okay, so you just you're looking good, by the way. Just one. <laughs> This guy in the audience stands up, looks like Macho Man Randy Savage. Just, he looked like him. He didn't try to dress like him. The dude actually had the long hair and everything, and he put a pair of sunglasses on. And when I was doing the bit in front of the stage, when we had an audience full of people, he comes up and he starts getting in my face about he was the best wrestler and all that. He just took it in my mind that um, I was going to play with him, and I did. I stayed in character, and I got up, and I got in his face, and I come up to him, and he swung a fake swing, and I miss, okay. and then I come back up, and I do the stone cold stunner on him. I oh, my goodness. Him. He went down. I turn around. I hit his head on here, and he fell down. It was knocked chairs out of the way. Totally um, ad-libbed the whole thing, and the crowd went crazy. So I got up, popped my two beers open, smashed them together. Uh -huh. Now, remember, this is like 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Threw back two uh, cold ones, and that was, uh, that was my quick change into a costume. That was Few awesome. Minutes. That's what I'm, th and that's what I wanted this show to be about. Thomas is going to get into it a little bit more. I'm not stealing anybody's thunder. We got a whole hour to cover, but uh, you could come up with things real quick if you think. I've seen people done this for, have done this for many years, and it works. It's all about um, the pulling the character off. A really good friend of mine, um, his uh, his name was Steve. I've known him for years. He had a group. They were called uh, Psycon, and it was. SCI-CON, like Science Fiction Convention. I was a member of that group. They were great cosplayers. The founder of it told me something very important, and you guys might know this as well. If you don't remember what exactly the costume looks like, and you and you watch this stuff over and over, no one else is going to notice it either. You know what I'm saying? Is that, does that seem relevant yeah um our rule always says it only needs to look good on camera that is correct <laughs> that's correct so uh, we were actually walking around naked before uh, we filmed this episode so we <laughs> let's put on camera so we put some clothes on thomas was fully clothed i want to ask about your shirt real quick because okay. thomas is a hawaiian shirt aficionado he loves them he has, uh, I think his closet is nothing but Hawaiian shirts. It's almost at that point. You made this shirt. Yes. This is my first uh, outing into it. Well, I would say I've done clothing before and sewing with my costume making. Right. But this is my actually first 
walk around every day apparel I've ever done. It's a it's a Marvel. Uh, looks like a bunch of different Marvel Marvel blah, blah, Marvel. That's funny. Say that three times real fast. <laughs> it's got the Hulk. We have Wolverine on yeah. here. Spider Man. Spider Man. Iron Man. A lot of comic old classic comic book covers. It's fantastic. Golden Age. You will not find a shirt like this um, anywhere in a store. Anything. My really awesome friend has made put this shirt together. I've I've watched him. He put it on Facebook and was showing a little bit about it, but. The, and it's another thing. It's not cosplay, but you know, you're putting things together by, hey, I want this. I'm going to build it. I'm going to make yeah. it look like this. So tell us a little bit more about some of the things you've come up with off the fly or any ideas or anything such from uh, the past. Uh, costume wise? Yes. Um, I want you to talk about Dr. Octopus first because you did that just recently, like in the last year. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us about your Dr. Octopus uh cosplay that was a culmination of all my knowledge up to that point uh with 3d sculpting uh cosplay um prop making because a lot of times i always felt a good costume needs a good prop you need something to sell it because like you get your classic doctor who people they'll wear a brown suit but it's a brown suit until you add a sonic screwdriver so it's adding the props that fit in my opinion finish off the costume uh, so I've always been the prop maker, you know, and uh, as early on as uh, making giant bunny feet to do Roger Rabbit uh, out of clown shoes. I put fur on it so I could add to that. It's great idea. Uh, yeah. And, uh, but with Dr. Octopus, it came with everything. And I also had to learn a new skill because I wanted to be elevator off the ground. Now, I've seen a lot of Dr. Octopus. You go to cons. And they do a lot of the film base, the right. uh, Alfred Molina one for Spider-Man 2, which is a great costume, don't get me wrong. And uh, the tentacle work is fantastic, but it's always four tentacles strapped to someone's back and they're walking around with a Spider-Man or, the, you know, they're doing something. Right. I always love the fact that Dr. Octopus's tentacles were alive and moving and animated. And I wanted to do a puppetry to mine. So what I did was I elevated myself by using drywall stilts. And then created a fake pair of legs and a fake pair of arms. So it looked like I was being supported or I was coming at you. But then my actual legs were working towards uh, going down through the stilts. And my actual arms were inside the tentacles. So I was puppeteering them. Correct. Oh my it, it was a very impressive. So, so uh, it, it's definitely a team effort to get that done. I have my... my uh, cosplayer in crime my wife Jessica helped me get an out get in and out of that thing uh, but it's just as simple as well I want to make sure that the tentacles can grab because they always pinch I was like well, what can I use oh I'll just get one of those grabber things you can get at the dollar store to pick up trash to pick or whatever, up trash. right mm -hmm. exactly and I'll get uh, the ones you know you can get them at a toy version that look like a robot claw yeah okay so again I just painted wow. that and then I added a, a, a styrofoam ball around it to give it some depth and the, basically extended my arm another three feet. So my arms are in these basically dryer tubes, puppeteering with another extended three feet so I could really reach out and attack somebody with the upper tentacles. And uh, so that, that well, worked out. I'm actually going to get a couple pictures for Randy to get a video. Into like, or, you know, yeah, there's there's right a, we'll put it right here, maybe, and show. Yeah, yeah, yeah very I can get some video of that one. Yeah. Um, send me what you got. Um, it was very impressive. You've done it at a couple conventions. I think you uh, performed that at uh, Megacon. Mm -hmm. You were at Sci-Fi Barto, I think, with it. Nope, you were at the uh, Main Street Comic Book Place where yeah. we did a comic book day there. Yeah, for, for Spider-Man. For Spider-Man. Yeah, it was a Spider-Man day. Anniversary. If you don't mind, because our listeners and our viewers want to know, maybe, I do, uh, what did you spend on that costume? Don't embarrass yourself. Make up a number. I'm trying to think. Um, it, well, it was... The dryer tubes were probably about thirty, forty dollars. The the tentacle, the, the the claws were about another ten bucks. Um, sweatpants, sweatshirt, and spray paint. Spray paint. Less than a hundred dollars. Less than a hundred bucks. Oh, nice. Well, I'm sorry, actually. The drywall silts were eighty five. Okay, so, all right, all right. <laughs> so that was the biggest purchase. Right. For that one. Still, you know, you're talking under one hundred fifty, two hundred bucks to make a very impressive costume. I mm -hmm. thought. I mean, we'll we'll show you the video. So that's why you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see uh, the videos up because we edit things in that you were not hearing or seeing 
on uh, the, the podcast. So Randy, our, our, uh, our lyrical editor over there, he, uh, he'll edit it in. But I have seen uh, Thomas uh, do, he has so many costumes. He mentioned the Batcave <laughs> earlier. He literally has room. I know I've got our new uh, poster up for Sci-Fi 2020, which is February the 15th. So make sure you make plans to come to that. Um, it's free. It's a Main Street Bar to Incorporated. Always event. a good time. Always a good time. Thomas has been there. He's uh, one of my superstars. Randy, I've mentioned, runs our car show. Thomas works for a uh, really awesome logo and signage place called Chilton Signs. Insert logo about right here. Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, if you want anything done, and, and I, I try to keep everything that we do for uh, Sci-Fi Bartow in Bartow, but unfortunately... Um, not everybody gets the sci-fi world. Um, at Chilton Signs, they they're all, full of dorks. They're full of dorks and nerds. It's great. You walk in there, you feel like you're going into like a museum of stickers and all that. Uh, who's at uh, Tampa Bay Comic Con today? One of your people, right? David is at Tampa Bay Comic Con. He's yeah. an excellent illustrator, a yeah. uh, wonderful designer, and he's got his artwork up there. He's with his wife, and she's got some uh, knickknacks she's selling also this year. So uh, people that run Tampa Bay Comic Con, I'm going to be sending you a bill for $300 for me mentioning your show on our <laughs> podcast. So look for that in a mailbox near you soon. So um, you have a one of my most favorite, personal favorite costumes that you have that I've seen is the Mr. Freeze from Batman, mm -hmm. the animated series. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that. Very inspired by Batman, the animated series. Uh, that's... Probably the core of my Batman beliefs is from that television show. And, you know, being a hero is cool. Yes. Being a villain is cooler. <laughs> I <Absolutely>. um, agree. <laughs> especially Mr. Freeze is the coolest. Literally. Uh, he has been one of my favorite characters, uh, wonderfully voice acted by uh, Sarah and, and Sarah. Michael and Sarah. Michael and Sarah, yeah. who is from, of course, Buck Rogers. And the original Star Trek. And the original Klingon. Yep. yep. Barbara Eden's husband at one time. Oh, really? Yes. I, I did not know. Michael and Sarah, he's got a really great voice. He I'm showed up on, uh, I just, I've been rewatching DS9, mm -hmm. and I showed up as a Klingon. Again. Oh, absolutely. He was one of those. He was one of the big three Klingons, yeah. they call him, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you're that far in Deep Space Nine. Not yes. a bridge off, but I know. I just got into season three now of it, so good old Netflix. Anyway, um, <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, sorry, I'm distracting. So <laughs> I. The stuff I like to do is I like I love the look. Uh, Tim, how oh man, Bruce Tim's uh, Bruce Tim. anima animated style in his design style. I just love all the sure the character developments and designs on that. And I loved Mister Freeze from the first time. And every time I saw Mister Freeze portrayed in the in conventions, no one did the dome. No, no one did a full dome on their Mister Freeze. And I'm like going you're missing the key element of the character. You keep missing the target. Exactly. It's like, and it always frustrated me. So I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to make this costume and I'm going to go all out. And I'm going to do my version of the animated series. So it was kind of a hybrid between inspirations from the show and then what I felt could update it to real life. And, uh, but I want to make sure I added that dome. And until that point, uh, that was my most expensive costume ever made because when I finally found the dome and I looked all over and I didn't want a glass dome and I didn't want the gumball do uh, bubble, right. it's 50s bubble on my head. I want an actual dome. squared off mm -hmm. dome. Mm -hmm. Well, I finally found it. It was a, an acrylic dome doll case that came oh. 24 inches high, 15 inches in diameter. Perfectly fits that way. It really got good movement. It's not too close to my face. And... It was four hundred dollars. Oh, oh my goodness. gosh! And I, the, I had to get permission from <laughs> from from the spouse, from the uh, boss, from the boss, <laughs> from the, boss, <laughs> oh, the comptroller. Comptroller. She is the comptroller, yeah. and I was like, you know, honey, I really want to make this costume. Can I buy this dome? She goes, yeah. How much? Four hundred dollars. Dun dun dun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there Close was up on the face with a mad face <laughs> on Jessica. <laughs> some concessions. <laughs> some concessions were made, but yes, I ended up buying the dome. And when I first put it on, it's really funny putting a 24-inch high dome that like sits way above your head. So I had to use a Dremel to cut it down. 
Was no it cracking or anything, right? Go very slowly. That's yeah. what I worry about. Oh gosh, I was like, well, I only get one shot of this. I mean, I couldn't have been. <laughs> I I was going so slowly and making sure it's deliberate that the cutting wheel on the Dremel was whipping molten lava onto my face because it's melting the plastic right. as I'm going around. But uh, it's been one of my most favorite. But it also has its drawbacks because then you find out why no one has done the dome. You can't hear anyone, and no one can hear you. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so like Charlie Brown's teacher. Exactly. It's yeah. like going. Everyone's talking. It's like, and of course, again, I got my partner in cosplay, Jessica, uh, helped me. I said, Miss Freeze over here. Miss Freeze over here. It, like guiding me, like where to go, because you also have to watch out. Is being in a dome, the first time I put it on. Uh, Another reason why you don't see it very often because it fogs up very quickly. Oh, I noticed that. Yeah. The um, times, yeah. So. One of the f fixes was that was using Rain-X anti-fog. Mm -hmm. You coat the inside of it. And then I also added fans to give myself fresh air. Well, you really went into that. Because <laughs> I had to, like, give my... Because you can't breathe in that thing because the way I sealed it up because it made a cowling that goes around my costume. So it's it's not airtight, but could I suffocate? Yeah, I could get a little lightheaded in there. <laughs> again, oh, wow. main, again, we did another event at Main Street Comics and Memorabilia. Check them out on Facebook. They're here in Bartow. Good friend of mine. Tell John that Sean sent you. Um, you did Mr. Freeze for that. Jessica was there. As your handler, I want to get into handlers here. In a little oh, yes. Because yeah. that's very important to, to uh, extensive cosplaying. Um, but there's a video, and i got to find it. You may have it, of her trying to give you popcorn. <laughs> it's, bending, popcorn. it's bouncing off your, your shield here. You know, it was really awesome. Um, and then I was actually DJ because I own a SLS Entertainment uh, Company. It's a DJ company, and I was playing music that day. And uh, Thomas comes to me and he goes, you got to have a Foreigner, Cold as Ice. That's my theme song today. So <laughs> I play that like 80 times. <laughs> so, and it's all about... Getting into the part, playing it. Yes, you oh. dropped some change on that Mr. Freeze costume. It sounded yeah. like, and uh, it was worth it. It's beautiful. It's in his. I mentioned his uh, Bat Cave earlier. That you go into this place. I was going to that before we went into Mr. Freeze, but you can see the Mr. Freeze helmet. There's um, uh, uh, Scarface uh, from uh, the Batman animated series, little puppet mm -hmm. guy, the gangster. That thing scares the hell out of me. By the way, <laughs> he loaned that to me for a Halloween party we did a few years ago, and I locked it in the back bedroom. Because I didn't, I'm, Charlie McCartney dolls, that freaks me out. Spiders are all right, all that, but Charlie McCartney dolls, I'm, I'm, it's just the lines dr drawn down the mouth. I don't yeah. know, but uh, but you you do things like you were talking about with the arms with Doctor Octopus. Is this one of your freeze weapons? Or yes. Well, got... not all of it was an expensive. So the dome was the most expensive part. Right. The cowling was made out of styrofoam. The rest of it was the shirts and yoga pants. But the gun, the Mister Freeze gun that I had was a dollar purchase from Target. Wow. So this was a simple Nerf ray gun kind of thing. And it, that's the wonderful thing about the toy guns nowadays. They try to make them so much not look like real hand Correct. guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then they go so crazy on the detail that it's easy to repurpose them. So for this one, I just, again, it was a dollar store purchase. And it shot off Nerf darts. And I painted it silver and gave it blue accents. And then on the tip of it, I added a LED, uh, LED tap light, nice, wow. which makes you know that's bright. makes it look like you know you're shooting off ice. When and you're when you're painting something like that, are you using special paint so it sticks to the plastic, or just you look for that now? Because I, I, when I first started it, no, they didn't do that. So back in the day, you had to sand it, right. give it a texture, add a primer, then do that. So it was a process, but now you can go directly. And get Krylon meant for plastics, so you can hit it with one coat and be done. Right. Because they're now on. Oh, absolutely. I love that. What's this little nozzle here for? Well, I have uh, a tube coming off of my cold tanks, which are nothing more than two Pepsi bottles. Right. Oh, and oh, by wow. PVC. And so there's a line coming off of those tanks ah! that uh, connect oh. to the gun, so it looks like the gun is being recharged by the cooling tanks. I'm supposed to freeze, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, I did that wrong. Got That's all right. You can add in. I know you're good at Fix that. Fix and post. <laughs> so that was, again, so yeah, so not all, every expensive costume needs, everything needs to be expensive. That was a buck and then a couple dollars for the paint. It looks like you bought it uh, as a professional uh, yeah, ray gun. Yeah, it's If there is a such thing as a professional ray gun. You missed it. I shot Randy with this gun. So again, get on the YouTube uh, video. You'd see a lot of fun stuff on there. So that's my personal friend. I know you've done many, many other uh, um, cosplays, but I want you to tell us, and, 
and we'll bridge off into something else because this is really funny to me. Tell us the up story from uh, MegaCon. <laughs> if you guys ever seen the uh, uh, Pixar movie, is it a Pixar yeah. Yeah. Um, movie? Up, um, Thomas and his beautiful wife Jessica have cosplayed characters from that. Tell us a little bit about that, please. Oh uh, well, we again we when we can partner off to do a joint costume, we will because it's much more fun. Because the more larger your group, the more attention you yes. get. Mm -hmm. And one of our favorite movies is Up. Uh, if you're not crying within the first 10 minutes. I refuse to watch it because I don't want to cry. You're not human. I know. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. So uh, and, and within that first 10 minute sequence, it's called Married Life. And it shows them growing up together. And it shows them at their jobs. And they work at the local zoo. And she holds the parrots and he sells the balloons. So we went, that's it. We're going to do Married Life. Yep. And we're going to do us at work. Now, granted, now this sequence is only on film for 10 seconds. Wow. The entire movie. 10 seconds. So it's uh, Carl and Ellie, and Carl has his balloon cart, and Ellie's dressed up in her um, safari kind of gear with a pith helmet. And so we put this together, and the first time we did it was for Mickey's Not So Scary, and I literally went out to Walmart and bought a helium tank, and I made my uh, balloon cart out of a wheelchair. I was going to ask you, how did you design that? That was... Um, it was a happy accident find, uh, mm -hmm. as Bob Ross would say, at a thrift store for for ten dollars. <laughs> wow! I got, I got a, I got a uh, it was busted up wheelchair, so I had to just take out the seat, took off the feet, and everything about it, and just kept the framework and the wheels on there. Took the wheels off, painted them yellow, and then I built a um, I bought foam board that you can get at any craft store or Walmart and stuff like that. It's that thick foam. Mm -hmm. paper. Yep. And I built a box out of that around the wheelchair. So I can just push it around and then uh, painted it with the balloon logo. And it looked like a real, and we'll get you some pictures up for the YouTube. It was very impressive. And so the first time I took it to Mickey's Not So Scary, I had all these balloons on it. And they were hanging by strings and floating around. So it looked like an actual balloon cart. And uh, we had a great time. So I didn't even think about it going to Megacon. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be great. We're going to have a good time. And as a joke... A joke, I walked up to the prop table check because, of course, now they have security. They want to make sure your AK-47 isn't real, your your Glock isn't your real. Wolverine claws aren't real. Yeah, they want to make sure nothing's going to yeah. hurt anybody. Yeah. Your swords aren't sharp. And I'm like, as a joke, here I am. I got the most lethal thing on the planet. Helium balloons. Ooh, Ooh, my oh, goodness. my goodness. How dare you? Well, security stops you. They go, where are you going with that? I'm like, excuse me? I said... Going in the gun, is this a trick question? They said, you can't go in there. I was like, why not? He goes, because of the balloons. I'm like, what? what? Yeah, exactly. Double take. Balloons. <laughs> they say, this is a government building. Orange County Convention Center is a government building. We cannot allow balloons in there. Oh, my God. And I'm like, why? And they said, well, if they get loose and hit the ceiling, uh, they could potentially hit a... Uh, a fire extinguisher, one of the sprinkler okay. heads, and it would set it off, and then you're drowning an area in water, and then there's a $10,000 fee to reset that thing. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Wow. And I'm like going, all right, fine. So they made me right then and there pop every balloon. In front of them. In front of them. Wow. So now I'm panicking. I'm like going, well, this... The prop is useless without the balloons. Pushing yes. a balloon cart without balloons is pointless. It's just an ice cream cart, then. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so once that happened, oh, God. We, uh, I, got, I was so frustrated. I immediately uh, jumped back in the car, left my perfect up-close parking spot at the Orange County Convention Center, oh. drove over to Walmart, bought a dozen dowel rods, right, and a, well, and a half styrofoam ball in black tuck tape, so I duct taped the styrofoam ball to the cart, shoved all the sticks into the styrofoam, right. re-blew up the balloons, and put them on sticks. Without helium in them. Without helium. Unless you're full of helium. And then they tried to stop me again with that. I was like, they're like, what's in there? I was like, my lungs. <laughs> <laughs> so they we made it pass. in. We made it in. But that's making a prop on the fly right oh, there. Oh, that, that's, and that's, way, and that's what we started the show off with, you know. Yeah. So don't get disappointed or discouraged if something like this happens. Uh, I'm not knocking uh, security uh, prop weapons check oh, yeah. at uh, events. We have it at Sci-Fi Barto. Um, and, and unfortunately, in the world that we are living in, things have changed a lot. Don't get stressed. Oh, my God, they popped my helium balloons. 
Thomas came up and Mag or galvanized it, as we like to say, <laughs> um, like MacGyver, and we call it galvanized. It's really awesome because this guy comes up with some really awesome stuff. And it, between him and his wife, they're like the center of the cosplay world, in my in my personal opinion. Well, thank because, you. you know, um, and I'm not just saying that because I'm personal friends. He's like a brother to me, but it's just... Don't get discouraged. Come up with something else. There's always another option that will work. So you walk into a convention, you have Thor's hammer, and it's a real hammer. You may not let that in there. It's also smart thinking. I've heard of other conventions locally getting more aggressive about this because they won't let, when people cosplay uh, Red Skull from uh, the Captain America movies, he's a Nazi. They're not letting uh, swastikas in, in yeah. some of the conventions because of the hate thing. But, you know... I personally think that's going a little too far, but I understand why they're doing it. But, you know, it's a costume, for God's sakes. You're not going to go in there as Red School and start um, starting the Third Reich over again or anything. You know, it's fun. But always remember, there's ways to do it. Um, on a bridge of that, um, you always remember, it's a when you want to do it, uh, I'm not getting into Nazi Germany or anything, but if you want to, <laughs> this, is my, this is my thinking. I mean, you know where I'm going to go with this, don't you, Randy? Yeah, I do, I do. Uh, the Nazi uh, uh, swastika is a red circle with a white with a black swastika in the center of it. Um, the original Klingon um, <laughs> flag is that same setup. So you got to think, well, I'll just get a little Klingon pen or something. And I know this is going way out there, but I had an incident at my per where I live here. Um, I got a really awesome, really into the Klingon Empire. I think they're great. Uh, and I got the original Klingon flag, which is a big red flag with a white circle and a black Klingon <laughs> emblem in the middle of it. I hung it out on my big oak tree. And I live on a main street we're in Bartow here, and people were coming by. And my wife and I are sitting out on the front porch watching a TV show or something. Like, people were running off the road. And I'm like, what the hell's going on with this? So it comes and we find out that people were trying to figure out if my Klingon flag was a Nazi uh, swastika. <laughs> I, actually had, I actually had someone pull up in my driveway. He had a bunch of things out in his hand. And I'm like, hey, what's going on, buddy? And he goes, I got something for you. And he brought me a whole stack of Klingon um, magazine. Uh, uh, it was a blueprint of a Klingon bird of prey and an emblem, what the emblem looks like. And he goes, uh, hey, thanks. He goes, I know you don't know me, but I live down the road and... Uh, my mother and my children think you're a Nazi sympathizer. Oh, I'm like, why? Because I'm bald? Because I, you know, I think I'm bald? And they go, no, because your Klingon flag is not everybody knows what that is. I said, well, everybody's an idiot then because everybody knows what Star Trek is, you know? And he goes, we had a big laugh over it. But you got to look into things like that. They're getting more and more strict at conventions getting in with cosplay. Mm -hmm. So, is that the flag that people rode by holler and go Georgia Bulldogs? Yeah, they I, I'm like, go Georgia Bulldogs because the Georgia Bulldogs color flag looks like that too. I'm like, what in the hell are these people talking about? It's funny you mentioned about changing the, the swastika symbol. I used to work for a, a, a rodent company. Okay. Uh, back in the day. And they. <laughs> I didn't know this. Oh, yeah, I'm a 13 year veteran. And so they. I used to work in the prop shop area in the AFI showcase. So they had all these old movie props that they had. One was the Zeppelin model from the Rocketeer. Really? Well, the Zeppelin, of course, had the big Nazi swastika yeah. symbol mm -hmm. on, on the back of it. Well, they did, when they hung it up in Disney, they just made it a cross. Interesting. Oh, they, changed okay. it, they changed it up. So being in the public eye, I was like, well, it was actually not getting to Nazi history, but it was originally based on the Christian cross. Oh. So that, that, that makes sense to me. So yeah. moving on. Okay. Um, Props. I see you brought a couple other things here. Show mm -hmm. us what you have today and tell us a little bit about okay. these items. Uh, one of my earliest ones, again, going back, we're going to go back, uh, was a set of, well, it's not a set, it's just one of them, uh, Wolverine Claws. And I based this off of the X-Men movie right, uh, with Hugh Jackman and uh, Patrick Stewart. And I thought, well, I, they come out of his hand and I was trying to figure out how to do it and I really enjoyed the character and wanted to do it. The Wolverine costume, and so I was walking around trying to figure out how I was going to do this and make them look good again, make them look good for camera. Mm -hmm. So it's just nothing more than eighth inch thick aluminum strips that were one inch that I cut down with a Dremel, and then I gave it a brushing effect. So no matter what angle you hit it at, light should always hit it so they look shiny. Oh, that's a good idea. And they don't need to be sharp to look good. Right. So again, you don't want them to be sharp because you don't want now, cosplay right. security to stop you. 
but then I just mounted them on by using steel rods bent at kind of a Z shape, mm -hmm. uh, drilled a hole because aluminum drills very nicely, glued the rods in, and then glued the other ends into a dowel rod, a one inch dowel rod. Yep. So it grips around your hand, the tongs go around your knuckles. And it looks like it's coming out of your knuckles. It looks like oh it's goodness. coming out of your hand. And, wow, that's really uh, The nice. best part is, is that you would tuck them in your jacket, your leather jacket you were wearing, and then you'd pull them out so you're doing this, yeah. the snick. Yep. Thing. And aluminum is a great idea because it makes it lightweight. I have run into people that have done something similar to this. Mm -hmm. Heavy metal, not mm -hmm. like the movie, other people, but yeah. like, you know, steel. This makes it, this makes it yeah, steel, and, and I've seen them made out of uh, aluminum foil, believe it or not. Uh, and, and it's anyway, and it's just household items you, so that you can find. So, what you would suggest to people making, um, and you mentioned a Dremel. What other small tools that you could get, probably inexpensive at a big box store like uh, Harbor Freight or Walmart or something like that? A Dremel is necessary. Dremel is, not, Dremel is my number one tool. Okay. I, you will spend money on a good Dremel. That's a must. Because that's got drill capability. Drill buffing. capability. Yes. Yeah. Almost every tool you need. Um, a small hand, hand drill. Right. And then a jigsaw. A jigsaw. Is and a hammer. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, again, if, well, it depends what kind of costs you. Correct. <laughs> but, yeah, um, yeah I, those are my, my basis for most. I did a lot of my earlier stuff with the weakest amount of tools in my workshop. So hmm. Hmm. That's really awesome, though. And what, which uh, Wolverine costume did you go with? The movie version? Yeah, it was the uh, Hugh Jackman. The Hugh Logan, Jackman. The leather okay. jacket, Logan. That's pretty cool. Don't that. cut yourself, Randy. You're a little young for the knives uh, and stuff. So. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Uh, that's why I wanted Thomas here because my nickname for Thomas is TG3. So I, I, I call him that uh, randomly so if you hear me say that. But that it's amazing. Um, I, you, you've been mentioning Jessica, your wife. Um, you and I are lucky because we're not such good looking guys to have beautiful... <laughs> women. I'm speaking for myself. <laughs> Randy as well. Ash, she's really awesome. Three women that support you and, and that's going into when you do elaborate cosplay at conventions like Dr. Octopus, Mr. Freeze, um, it's good to have someone watching your back. Yes. Because you got people running up to you because you have an amazing costume and wanting pictures and you never know if someone's going to you know mess with you or whatever, but it's good. And, and, and Jessica makes a really good handler with you because I've yes, seen sir. her in action. So next time, if she's available, I'd like to have her on the show as well. One, one show. of my favorite pictures of Jessica as my handler is when I did the Rocketeer. Yeah. And I had an American flag because, of course, there's that iconic shot of the Rocketeer on top of Griffith Observatory yep. with the gun, the American flag waving in the background. You just, oh, USA. And you couldn't get any better than that. So I said I wanted the USA flag in the background of my pictures. So I bought a flag, took a very thick wire to make sure it stayed rigid. Okay. So it looked like a waving American flag and right. I mounted it on. So I, if I did it by myself, I'd put it in one hand, have it behind me, have the gun the other, look off and very right. patriotic. Well, Jessica got to the point where she was holding the flag for me. So there's all these pictures. I'm looking all, getting the pose and looking all rocketeer, trying to show the pack. And there's Jessica smirking. Just, oh, are we done yet? I've been reduced to a flagpole. Are we done yet? Can I can I go get a coffee now? She's amazing. I love I love to see you two, you two teamed up together. And like I said, we hang out with these guys uh, every once in a while when we have some free time, which is very rare because we both work very strenuous jobs. Jessica's job mm -hmm. is, 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 is keeps her extremely busy. Um, Thomas, he is uh, the, the master of creating car wraps. Um, and you can show some right. pictures when oh, we'll yeah, talk about I know you will. Car wraps, other logos. You go in there, it's a dream world. I had asked him before we, uh, my wife and I went on vacation this year. I like to personalize all my vehicles. So <laughs> um, my dog, and you're going to think it's crazy. We're going to do a whole podcast about um, dressing your dog up in cosplay. That's coming up very soon. So I went to, we bought uh, my, my little chihuahua. She's a little, Randy will show you a picture of her. And we put her in like this little, um, we call it her bucket. And it's like a, a beach wagon. <clears throat> So I went to Thomas and I said, I'm naming this thing the Botany Bay. The Botany Bay? The Botany Bay? We got to get out of here. Anyway, so I said, I need two tags. 
and it said Botany Bay. So he came back in this beautiful, and it had rust, like it had been rusted, and all this. And he had put a uh, con, Wrath of Khan's necklace on there that he made out of the uh, uh, in a, 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 a Star, uh, Starfleet logo. And but he called it the ISS, which is what it was supposed to be called in the movie. I said, no, my dog's initials are KLS because it's Kitty Lee Serdinsky. And if you say it three times really fast, KLS, 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 it sounds like KLS. Star Trek connection. <laughs> Did you know that? I, I, I started putting that together. Yeah, so you said that. <laughs> so we got to put this thing on there, and he threw it together, and it's beautiful, and it looks great on the vehicle. This man is a is amazing when it comes to making detailed things. Um, if you do get a chance again, he works at Chilton Signs in Dundee, Florida, off of Twenty Seven. Very easy to find because there's either a Hot Wheels uh, life size car, a Jurassic Park vehicle. A uh, X-wing fighter. Uh, you know, we have a rebel rebel ship. Rebel ship. What? There's a third one. That's it. That's it. it's it's mine. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Isn't there a red pepper dancing on a yellow background? Yeah, the something? super pe pepper. Oh yeah, that's super the, chili. That's super chili. Yeah, yeah there's there a logo. Super chili. That's on one of the but cards. Check it out. I can't talk enough about them. They've done so many wonderful things. They've turned my wife's uh, SUV into a Iron Man tribute, uh, Jarvis tribute vehicle. My truck uh, looks like the Star uh, Ship Enterprise. They do amazing things. They have wrapped, and you got to show a picture of RJ's vehicle. At the last Sci Fi Barto, um, one of Thomas's good friends, and now mine, uh, came, and he's really into uh, steampunk, loves 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. They made his car look like the Nautilus. And I'm not just saying they stuck stickers to this car, <laughs> they made this sucker look like the Nautilus with a little bubble. Um, what are those, uh, what are they called? The windows in the front that made the Nautilus look like the monster coming up out of the water. It is amazing. The coolest thing, and I love that rap because a lot of people watch it and a, and a lot of people are really attracted to, what's the guy that does most of your rapping there? Jared. Jared. Jared um, Gutenberg. Because he's a pretty nice looking young man. I'll even <laughs> say that. And I, uh, I'm very secure with my heterosexuality. But, uh. They bet they asked me, and he has a fan club of ladies that <laughs> sit across at the information booth. I don't want to mention my friend Virginia Grant um, drools every, but they had him dressed as uh, uh, Michael Douglas's character yes. from the original uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea with a striped shirt and a little hat, and it was so funny because they took just a regular, "Hey, we're going to wrap a car with some." Uh, uh, material make it look like this they added to it and made it a show almost so when you guys come visit us at sci-fi barto um 2020 um in main street barto area thank you main street barto and the downtown barto area it's free to attend you can see things like this because other vendors do things like this and that mixes into the cosplay because you know they had a guy dressed up as michael douglas character plus rj um fantastic top of the line uh costume maker Made See, a, uh, he's a professional. He, you think so? He's, a, think? he's a professional. Well, uh, he is very awesome. Yes. That's all I can say. I wish he lived closer because oh. then I'd be walking around like the board or something. <laughs> he makes miniature things on his costume actually work. Um, when he does steampunk, he has gears that turn. He has, what other things does he does he produce? Well, he that? made his air tanks. He is incredible. His leather crafts are beyond. Leather me. crafter. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's. He was Captain Nemo, um, helmet and all. Hit of Sci Fi Bar Tour 2019. Um, so, costuming, it, it has all different levels. I know that Thomas and Jessica do steampunk, which is, in my opinion, an easy uh, craft to get into because all you have to do is glue gears on stuff, right? Just get some super glue and <laughs> glue gears on your knuckles and all that. That's uh, an inside joke. There's, so, a, there's a song for that. Yeah, look it up, uh, glue some gears on it. But they do amazing cosplay with. Uh, Steampunk, they got my wife and I have got a couple of our hats out here. It's just things you can pick up. I think you picked up my uh, hat at a, what was it, Redditor's or something? Steampunk. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can get these hats for under 30 bucks, and you don't have to buy, or you can. I don't want to knock any of our, our makers away, but, you know, there's people that make these hats. You can buy them. Uh, a good a lot of my friends make hats, and they are at Sci-Fi Barto. They're very elaborate. But if you are cost to me on a budget, you can find stuff. Uh, anywhere and throw it together and hopefully no one's going to notice you've just glued some gears on it yeah. or whatever but you know it's all up to what you are you it's know good gateway cosplay it is a good <laughs> gateway cosplay i won't lie to you my steampunk jacket i picked up at uh, uh what's the the uh, halloween store what's it called the spirit, spirit. halloween 
and I love it and I've modified it and that's another thing you can do with it and it was it hides a fat guy really well if you're an overweight person you're scared to get into cosplay steampunk is your alley because corsets are your corsets friends. are your friends <laughs> big jackets are your friends you know and people can pull it off because steampunk is not a set like there's no rules no, there's no rules and you can come up with almost anything so um, what else do you have here to show us today? Uh, a, uh, thing. Uh, a very, very, very basic prop. I don't know, uh, for I'll have to describe it for the people who are listening. But technically, these this is a replica of the data disc of the battle plans from Star Wars. It is uh, really featured in Rogue One. But this is what Princess Leia slides into R two D two in the first movie. You don't really get a good look at it until Rogue One. Uh, but this was just a piece of aluminum that I sanded down. And then if you have a Cricut machine, one of those vinyl cutters, right? Uh, just gets. I had got gold vinyl, and just cut the discs out, and then use another piece of different vinyl for the bottom. Uh, my wife used this for her prop as when she played Mon Mothma, and it was it was spot on. I thought it was really the actress myself. So she, uh, we, she, had, they had people bowing to her. So going, help us, Senator. Save us from the Empire. And so it was, <laughs> it, awesome. it was wonderful. And, of course, she'd be go up to Vader and she'd be like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, look what I've got. <laughs> That's you know? hilarious. So she was like, it, we had a really good time with that. So, again, it's very, uh, this is probably $5 to wow. put together. Easy, easy money yeah, right that, there. That That's, was a beautiful one. I've seen this in the picture. I've never actually got a hold of it. If you, I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm showing it to the YouTube subscribers, hint, hint. So that's <laughs> awesome. And then uh, my last one that I brought with me is from one of my favorite television shows. This looks like your average everyday aluminum box, but you open it up, and dun, 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 it is a replica of the Farnsworth from wow. Warehouse 13. Holy smokes. And uh, this is one that I wanted so badly that I went on a site called Replica Prop Forum. And so, like, okay, what do I need to do to get this made? How, right. how do I get, obviously, I don't have $500 to buy one. Right. So, what do I need to do to make it? So, they first tell you, first you need a aluminum box. Uh, this is a aluminum fly fishing tackle box. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking Altoids, but Altoids would be smaller than yeah. that. But it's the same type it of is, And I had to get this from a sporting goods store. These are made specifically in England. Uh, and so, there's a brand that sells these. So, I got the really? box. I got the box, I you know, spent $20 on the aluminum box, took out all the fly fishing components part of it, <laughs> and then I, in Photoshop, designed the faceplate, which I then took to a trophy shop, the file, and had them make it out of what's called flexible brass. Really? Or brass plastic. Oh, huh. wow. And so they engraved it all mm -hmm. and made all the dials and everything. It's like a guitar amp and all mm -hmm. there. Yeah, and then I went to uh, one of my favorite stores called Skycraft, which is up in Longwood. Right, I've heard you talk about that. And that is Ooh. actually, you know, it's more downtown Orlando. Anyway, um, again, and uh, again, Skycraft, we're going to be sending you a bill for. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It is, it is a hidden trove, um, but they're about to move. No, so they're they're going to stay in Orlando, but they're moving into Mount Dora. No, okay. not, not, no I'm sorry, not Mount Ooh. Dora. Uh, Winter Park. Okay, Winter Park. Winter Park. They're just moving closer cl closer to Rollins College. Anyway, so I got all these bits and bobbles, and then I just printed out a picture of Artie from the show, uh, stuck it in behind the glass, and there you go. And I remember taking it to MegaCon to have specifically Artie and a seat it. autograph. And nice. I, I, I left room for the other girl if I ever meet her or um, Allison Scagliotti. Can who, I see that? I'm sure. This is really nice. And uh, they both were geeking out over it. Oh, they're were like they going, really? So oh, when they signed that, like going, Artie, look at this. <coughs> look what this guy made. This it's like, their communicator, correct? Is yeah, it was. Yeah, I never, I've been, never got into that show, so I'm going to now. It's a steampunk. Well, you have to have Amazon, I think. Okay. What is it called? Warehouse 13. Mm -hmm. Had about four or five that? seasons. Take a look at that. And uh, <clears throat> the, the mythos was there were, it was, honestly, it was a steampunk takeoff of Friday the 13th, the TV show. I did watch that. Friday so you basically had all these items that were, cursed or that had effects that they had to watch out for so we had these two agents who went around and collected and these were their communicators mm -hmm. and philo farnsworth was the inventor of the television set right so this was his first 
foray into it that he actually created a television two-way mm -hmm. transmitter. Have you cosplayed this character at all? Or no, any, no, never cosplayed. Because they, they were kind of like in street clothes. Yeah, this is, they, yeah. I know a little bit about the show. But so, I might have, have, have a question. It. Yes, go ahead. Who's Buck Rogers? Who's Buck Rogers? Ooh. Yeah. Who, which which I mentioned that? I have no clue. You don't know. Who, I got along in the DVDs. Okay. You've got them. The uh, the eighties. <gasps> Do you want to borrow it? Okay. Hell yeah, what All right. Thomas gets dibs. Okay. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Right. Buck Rogers, of course, is a uh, first was a uh, cartoon strip in the twenties and thirties. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, then got turned into mm -hmm. a uh, serial, uh, meaning the old timey black and white serial shows that they would show vignettes of in between the major theatrical. Oh, okay. when, you said, when you said serial, he thought like Captain Crunch. I was. Or Fruit <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, Fruit and yeah. Pebbles. So serials were a big inspiration for Spielberg and Lucas. And like, <clears> so <throat> at that time, it was right. Flash Gordon mm -hmm. and Buck Rogers. Well, um, then flash forward. Uh, to the 80s, uh, Glenn A. Larson had a couple of hits after the success of Star Wars. Yep. He created uh, Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. uh, he did Knight Rider. And then one of his other ones he did was, of course, Buck Rogers. It only ran for two seasons, uh, starring Gil Gerard, Aaron Gray, uh, lots of other things. And the first season, I, I, I was more of a Buck Rogers person than a Battlestar Galactica person. I was, too. So, I, I it was... It was James Bond in space. Okay. And it was it was a man yes. at a time. The premise was in this version, Buck Rogers was a 20th century astronaut, got thrown out of his mission. And um and then uh and he gets slingshot back to Earth frozen okay. five hundred years later. Oh, so okay. now it's Buck Rogers in the twenty fifth. So he was cryogenically frozen, comes back, and everything everyone he knows is gone. The world's pretty much apocalypse. Yeah, and they're like there were dome cities, and it was very comical. Oh yeah, a lot of funny stuff. A lot of sexy girls in it. A lot of robots. Oh, a lot of... Tweaky. Who was Tweaky? Was it the voice? Was voiced by Mel Blanc. Mel actor, Blanc. Mm -hmm. And the uh, actor was Felix Sela. Right. Who also did uh, Cousin It. Yep. That's what I was getting at with that. So again, forgetting names because yeah. it's just two guys talking about sci-fi. So. Yeah. So. But do check it out if you haven't. Um, there's all types. It's of, one of my favorites. It it is. Second season I didn't like so much. When they went to the Searcher and, they were, uh, and Hawkman came and in. They and they turned Colonel Wilma <laughs> Deering into a stewardess. Yeah, they, a, did. Just, they did. They whipped her out too much. They did. They her as a badass. So but, give us some advice. I know we kind of bridged off a little bit. <clears throat> if you're starting and you're young, whatever, older, and you want to start doing costuming, cosplay, I don't know when... Costuming turn into the word cosplay. What's the difference between those two? Tell us. Really Com quick. Technically, cosplay is when you dress up and portray, meaning not you're not just walking around as dressed as a character, but you are playing as character. a character. It's it's <clears throat> it's those obnoxious people dressed as Deadpool that don't break character. Yes. So they just are always. <laughs> Randy's got a Deadpool shirt. Can I say, say asshole? Yeah, you can it's, say asshole. We're on the internet. Um, it's it's the ones that are always the assholes that come kind of like when can, and. I don't mind if you're having fun. Have fun. Enjoy it. But it's okay to break character. It's okay to talk to me as a human being, as a normal human being, which sometimes... I'm not a cosplayer. I'm a human being. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that is technically the difference. But it's, uh, it, it encompasses everything now. So it's, it used to be a, a subroot of costuming, and now it was cosplay. But, right. And now they just say cosplay. It pretty much encompasses everything. So, I'm a new to the world of cosplay and costume. We're assuming this. Okay. What is your advice to me starting out if I want to go to Sci-Fi Bartow, which is uh, coming up in February 2020, downtown Bartow, Main Street Bartow event. You know I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a shameless plug guy. Um, it is February the 15th. Uh, sorry. It's free to attend. Uh, but barely ever rings. And it, well, it doesn't. Don't say that. It's In the seven years, we're about to celebrate year seven this year. It's rained twice for like 30 seconds, typical yeah. Florida wet weather, you know. Um, but I'm starting out. What, what, what do I do? How do I, what do I need to do? What do I need to focus on? First off, what is your passion? Okay. That is where you always start. What, what gets you excited? What get, makes you happy? What, what fandom out there is your, is it comic books? Is it movies? Is it cartoons? Is it gaming? Is it... There's so many genres now in the world of cosplay. Because it used to be you walk around a con and be like, if you didn't know what it was, oh, it must be anime. 
Yeah. Now, now it's like, I don't know what that is. It must be gaming. Yeah. And it's like going, because there's so right. many. And so there's so many offshoots. Whatever is your passion, go with that passion. And even if it is as simple as taking, here you go. Here, you want basic costuming 101? Get a bunch of Legos. Put them together in a block, and you can walk around as Ziggy from Quantum Leap. You could. Because that's all it was. It was what? a block was of Legos. Really? It was just clear Legos. I didn't know that. It was a block, it was a block of clear Legos when, when the uh, Dean Stop, Stockwood? Dean Stockwell. Stockwell, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dean Stockwell. I remember the name of an actor. Uh, portrayed hey. Ziggy, the, pe the partner on Quantum Leap, mm -hmm. and he was always punching and stuff. Into, it was nothing but Legos. Wow. So there you go. You can wear a suit and have Legos, look all 80s, done. You got a costume. Done. Awesome. You got a costume. Awesome. And you can just simply go, you know, because now I can't remember the other characters, uh, Scott Bakula's main character's name. Oh, I can't either. Uh, I'm blanking. Dr. Beckett. Beckett. Mm -hmm. So you can just walk around and you can just go to people. It's like, Sam? Sam, is that you? You know, because <laughs> Sam would change looks every week. Yeah. But oh, Ziggy so could see it through that. Yes. No. But he knew what he was like. Exactly. So that's that would be an easy cosplay. Mm -hmm. Find something and you don't always have to spend hundreds of dollars. People get intimidated by what they think is the cost of things. And it's not the case. Thrift stores, uh, Salvation Army, Goodwill are great places. Mm -hmm. to go and um it is there's no rules so have fun with it so simple easy i like star trek i could just wear you could even find an inexpensive star trek shirt that has just the logo on it for the sleeves and we wear a pair of black pants and you got a uniform you jess know? and i went as even cheaper star trek we bought two shirts uh red shirts one i got an extra large she got a three extra uh, three extra large so we turned it into the skirt we turned it inside out, pinned it to her, sewed in the inside. Great idea. And oh, wow. then we just found iron-ons, and we took a Sharpie marker to darken the collar. No way. And that's all it was. was <laughs> See, wow. easy, simple. So And black pants, that was it. Start looking in your home first. You got the closet you know, full of shirts that you may not wear anymore that you might be able to rip or paint or mm -hmm. color over. Start there. Start simple and easy. Go to the kitchen. Find utensils. There are some utensils that look like that you could turn into butter uh, knives. Butter knives. Instant, yeah. instant Wolverine gloves. Yes. Um, <laughs> you, you have to remember, you look at uh, original Star Trek. I always go back to Star Trek, but a lot of the little um, things, like the Dr. Uh, McCoy's little, I think it was called a Feinberg, was none of the lipstick uh, holder, the little uh, um, cylinder little thing on the end of it. It's a simple oh, yeah. thing. You right. go and see these props that you've seen on television. They had the Star Trek Museum in Las Vegas, and I was amazed when I looked at that, like, that's a bit of a ladies' compact. You I mean, know? Death Star was nothing more than battleship models kit bashed. Yep. On no, on no flat, they just took a top, ton of little models and just glued them onto a flat surface, surface of the Death Star right. for the film. And, that, and, and it's easy cosplay. Costuming is easy. Start your home first. Don't go big unless you think you can handle it. I, I talk to a lot of people, that, and I've been in a lot of conversations on, on the Facebook. I say the Facebook, so... Um, <laughs> That it, oh, I don't want to do it because I'm overweight. I don't want to do it because of this, that, and the other. Well, find characters that match that would be awesome. Yes. Um, I'm, a, I'm a member of a group. You find it if you're over 30. It's called Over 30 Cosplay, and it's old people like me cosplaying. And it is an awesome Facebook page. A lot of great costuming. Check that out. Um, I don't mind giving out shameless plugs to on our show because it's, it's all about two guys talking about sci-fi and we have a guest every once in a while. How are we on time? Are we five good? Minutes. You got five minutes? Okay, we got to find five minutes to talk about. So, biggest cosplay disaster you've ever had? Well, Jessica thought I was going to fall as a stock dog. Um, <clears throat> it's not really a disaster. Uh, well, getting stopped by security with balloons. Right. But I also got stopped for security at Mickey's Not So Scary with a sword. Okay. I was doing Jack Sparrow. Uh, and the first time I went in, didn't think anything of it. Went in, had a great night, was doing Jack Sparrow all night. Next year, lent the costume to my brother-in-law. He was even better. And he walked around, said, oh, I'm going to do it again. Came in, they stopped me. Where are you going with that? I'm like, well, I'm going to the part where I've done like four times before. Not with that. I was like, so I had to, You got I, the wrong person that time. Right? I, uh, I got the, uh, you know, they had that Inside the Magic Tour, Behind the Scenes Tour. I got the Security Wing Tour of Disney. Uh, they took me up and 
Really? Yeah. It was that serious. It was that, well, they had to lock it up and do all this stuff. I was very cooperative. I didn't cause a fuss. I was like, do what you got to do. Was it a plastic sword? No, it was, it, was a, it was a replica cutlass, but it came out of the scabbard. That was the only thing they, they uh, wanted. They don't want it to come out of the scabbard. And I was, I was like, I can probably lash it to it and have no problem. But they're like, no, 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 no. So, uh, disasters? No little costumes. Yeah, stuff falls apart. Um, do you suggest uh, keeping a, like a little toolkit to repair your costume? Or? I, I would say I used to, but now there's people yeah. that actually cosplay as emergency cosplay repair people. I've seen that. They carry sewing kits, duct tape, uh, everything, wow. wire. They're fantastic. You find them, and they actually have... Costume repair stations now at conventions. That's awesome. I've they, seen that. They support it. They support yeah. it big time. And they ask for a little donation. Cos like, hospital or something. Hospital. Yeah, hospitals. hospitals. That's what it's called. Yep. That's amazing. I always like to keep little extra things on me, you know, because Lori will do the laundry and she was like, what's this roll of tape that's been washed? Because I always keep little stuff on me at all times because I am I do small projects and things here at the house. I paint rocks and seashells. Ooh. But it's a lot of fun. But, you know, I, I'm always finding things. I do projects. I need to talk to you about Halloween. I'm going to bridge off into Halloween real quick in the last couple of minutes we got. Tell us about your uh, you and Jessica coming to our Halloween trick-or-treat night uh, this past year. Oh, we had a blast. Tell us about that costume. Uh, that costume is our singing bus based on the Haunted Mansion singing bus. And I got the inspiration from there was a barbershop quartet that did a version of Grimkin and Ghost on YouTube. And I was like going, hey, I could do that. And so that was my first foray into EVA foam costuming. Nice. So basically taking uh, floor mats and yoga mats and cutting them up and gluing them together and painting them to look like things. I've never done that before. That was the first time. So we made like basically a sculpted bus that our head popped through and created a cardboard base pedestal that we could see. Like this picture right here. Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> For our viewer, our, our <laughs> listeners out there, Check the YouTube channel. And, then you, and right. then you program your phone to play Grim Grinning Ghosts. So you can play that. And then you, we just paint, oh, wow. did our face paint uh, black and white to match the, the rest of the sculpt. So right. we look like statues. Wow. It was so, amazing. Um, they And then you guys went to the uh, the Halloween Disney, the Not So Scary with those. How did that work out? Oh, uh, we, we stood by the Haunted Mansion for most of the night to take pictures. That's all we did. That's really <laughs> awesome. Is it hard to get into Disney World if you want to do a cosplay or costume? Depends on, like, Mickey's not so scary, they're not going to be, obviously now as an adult, they don't let you on a daily basis. They only allow the kids to dress up. Um, and if you show up on Mickey's not so scary, scary, don't come in a Disney costume. Because they don't want you to compete with, with, their, what, they got. with what they've got. Right. And that's the whole thing. I've had friends who've done that who have phenomenal in my opinion, sometimes better and superior to what Disney does. I agree. Disney is now up their game because they had so many people walking in off the street that looked better than their, right. their costumers. Right. And so they were followed and harassed until they left. And it was like, going, come on, let them have fun. It's one night. It's one night. We, and we pay for it. But now they don't, you know, they don't let, they got their new policies, which is fine. Um, but the new thing, of course, is bounding. It's like people, ah. Bounding. Bounding. It's where you take a costume or a character and you merge it into normal everyday clothes. So if I want to, say if I want to be Ariel, green pants, purple top, red hair, I'm bounding. Nowadays, anybody could be Ariel from The Little Mermaid. That's right. So, so it's that's, a, I didn't know that. You taught me something. I didn't it's, know that. Uh, wow. You can look it up and it's it's all part of the, it's really taken off in the um, <clears throat> the Dapper Day uh, groups. Really? Yes. I've seen the Dapper Day stuff. Want to wrap up? Thank you, Thomas, for coming and being part of the show. Um, Thank you for we're gonna, you're going to be doing another show with us very soon. About uh, well, can we go ahead and say what's going to yeah, happen? Yeah, Time traveling. Um, so I want to thank our sponsors real quick: SNL Restaurant and uh, Lakeland for being a sponsor. Um, J and E, as you've been seeing, I've been drinking out of my uh, Sci-Fi Barto cup. J and E Creations. Find them on Facebook. Order your Sci-Fi Barto cup. Um, they're going to be in limited supply the day of the event, and she is allowing pre-orders, and she's offering free shipping in the uh, United States. This is a, uh, a a cup that can keep cold beverage cold almost all day, and hot beverages hot all day. It's made of stainless steel, and no uh, two are alike. I'm showing everyone in uh, viewer land, uh, um, uh, YouTube land out there right now. 
Um, I want to thank uh, Chilton Signs. Uh, they have uh, been a big part of Sci-Fi Bartow and my personal life for many eons. Uh, um, I want to thank uh, Jessica Galvin. Um, you, we've talked about her. I'm going to try to get her on the show one day. She stays so super busy. Um, uh, my wife, who's our background producer kind of here, and Randy for uh, uh, coming up with our uh, show. Please find us on uh, YouTube and subscribe to us. Um, this is our fourth show. We are jumping by leaps and bounds. Oh, I was going to mention some people that made comments. Do you want to jump in on that? Let's do that at the end of the other. Okay, we'll do it at the end of the other one. But we had some really great comments, some great constructive criticism. We are listening to you people out there. So, again, I want to thank Thomas for being here. Thank you, sir. Thank you for and showing me. some great thank you, sir. things. And uh, we'll see you on the next uh, Talking Sci-Fi with uh, Sean and Randy. Have a great one. Live long and prosper.